be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed, and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God. For the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who willingly walked the way of the cross, strengthen your church through the witness of your servants Agnes Sao Ku Ying, Agatha Lin Chao, and Lucy Yi Zen Mei, to hold fast the path of discipleship even unto death. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them wise. The foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there came a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. He comes out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. Foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, and saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One of the things that scripture calls us to is integrity, to a matching up between inner and outer. We are asked to act on, in the world on what we believe in our hearts. And even more importantly, we're supposed to allow our public beliefs to influence the thoughts of our hearts. One of the ways to read the legal materials in the book of Exodus is to understand these as God's instructions to the children of the slave generation on how to be a nation on how to be God's people. And in the passage that we heard today, God gives a series of laws about being a good neighbor. And the laws push beyond the appearance into the depths. So, don't spread false reports. Okay, that's pretty clear and understandable. Um, but then a little deeper, don't join hands with the wicked to act as a malicious witness. You can look all saintly and innocent while you give a false witness. So that law then takes the first one and pushes a little deeper. You know, and uh, like all of our mothers told us when we were children, you shall not follow a majority in wrongdoing. Right? I couldn't help but think of, you know, moms saying, well, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? Right? You shall not follow a majority in wrongdoing. Um, in other words, there's a challenge. Right? Not only is inner and outer supposed to match up, but they're supposed to match up even when you stand alone. Right? So the, these laws keep pushing a kind of integrity. Um, the second paragraph in particular, I love that one, right? You come upon your enemy's ox or donkey going astray, you shall bring it back. Right? And when you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, you won't hold back from helping it. You must. And I can imagine the thought. I can imagine it in myself and in others. Oh, that's so-and-so's. That's so-and-so's car. I'm not going to help them. 
they're wicked or they're mean to me or I disagree with them. Right? It's a very common human thing. We can all imagine that thought in our heads, going through our minds. But the law that God gives in Exodus says, "Uh uh-uh, no, 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 you have to help. You have to be a good neighbor. You don't get to hide out uh, with those thoughts kept quietly inside. You have to act according to what you believe. So all of these materials are, are pushing towards a kind of integrity. And it's really interesting then to put that up against the story of the bridegrooms, which is really a very, in a way, a very comical story. It's comical because they go out to meet the bridegroom. Okay, they're all expecting the bridegroom. You know, we preach about this, and a lot of preachers talk about this as in Advent, as you're supposed to be expectant. You're supposed to be always on the watch, right? Um, but the all of the ten bridesmaids are watching. They're all expecting the bridegroom. They all go out, so it's not really about that. Um, And then five were were wise and five were foolish, and and, um, the wise word there in Greek is more like savvy. Right? They were savvy. And five were foolish. And you know, the, the idea, we're out of oil, right? Well, did they, they didn't leave their lamps trimmed while they are burning while they were sleeping. I mean, what's really going on here, right? And then they're out of oil, and the, the, the savvy bridesmaids say, well, you better go buy some. Who's selling oil at midnight, <laughs> right? I mean, right, the, the whole thing is comedic. And when we read through the thing, it, the most natural temptation in the world is to imagine ourselves in companionship with the wise bridesmaids. Until we get to the end of the story, and don't take it literally, but you get to the end of the story and there's that shocker. They say, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he replies, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. And that shocker sentence jars us out of our complacency. And it makes us realize the appearance can deceive us. We can deceive others with our own appearances when they don't match what we believe. We can deceive others with our own appearances when we hide our wicked thoughts and let them creep out in actions. Like, oh, I didn't see your broken down donkey. I'm sorry. So the story, when it says keep awake, it's, I think, inviting us, among other things, not to make quick assumptions, but to really look, to keep our eyes awake to how we're doing and not just how the world is doing, to how we're being people of integrity and not just how the world is being people of integrity. If you think of our three Chinese martyrs, couple of things that are worth thinking about, right? Agnes and um, Agatha and Lucy. Agnes and Lucy both came from (coughs) dysfunctional families and were treated very poorly. Agatha is the one we know least about, but she seemed to have a supportive family. So immediately these three martyrs challenge us not to make quick assumptions based on people's families. And then all three of them come from a culture, in, and especially in the 19th century, when women were supposed to be submissive, demure, not assertive. So can you imagine the inner strength it took for these three Chinese women 
to resist calls to recant their faith by male authorities. There is in them, though they may not look like it, though they may not be given a lot of space to present that inner strength that they had in their society, there is in them an inner strength which was expressed in their martyrdom. An inner strength. And it was that inner strength that fed them in teaching the faith to others, in wanting to share the faith with others, in raising up teaching children in the community about the gospel. All three of them had this inner strength that it could be easy to miss if we're not people who are awake and interested in integrity. And that's the challenge for us. You can't figure out your own or someone else's integrity in a hurry. You can't look at them and say that person has integrity. You have to be awake to who they are and listen to them. And that involves a risk. A risk as great as martyrdom. A risk of looking silly. Many people don't want to take that risk. I'm going to be guarded. I'm not going to trust people. I'm not going to look at myself or The Lenten season asks us to reflect on ourselves, to look at our world and try to look at it more in a line with what we truly believe, to look at ourselves more in a line with what we truly believe, to ask ourselves if we're being people of integrity. These three martyrs and these scripture readings ask us to take our time to reflect, to be awake to what's going on around us and within us, and to do our very best to always act with integrity. Let us pray for the church and for our world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Christ in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Christ, Christ in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who <coughs> suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray to you also for forgiveness of our sins. And have mercy on us, O most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things found and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, and leads the exiles home. In Christ, your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as daughters and sons in our Father's house. We who by Christ's power follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of his obedience, now offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for Christ, in whom the world is reconciled. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. Through that self-giving act, death was swallowed up in victory that life and joy might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died, your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
remembering now the suffering and death and proclaiming the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, our Redeemer, we bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Christ. Grant that we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your reign. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of blessed Mary the God-bearer, Agatha, Agnes, and Lucy, the apostles and prophets, and all of our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now your Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.